All right, now that we've got at least some people here. Hey there, everyone. My name is Maverick from Arizona Science Center, and I am coming to you with a awesome little one o'clock demo here. Today, you might notice it's a little bit dark. The lighting in here is not perfect. That's because we're going to be talking about lasers and lights today, specifically a lot of laser stuff, but some of the science behind um, lights and lasers, and we're going to be doing some really cool demos, and you can see those a lot better with the lights a little darker. So the main tool I'm going to be using today is this fancy little thing. Now, this is a laser pointer. Now, in terms of safety precautions, you always want to be extra careful with laser pointers. You never, ever, ever want to point them in your eye. You always want to be careful for um, redirections of light and refractions and reflections and all of that. So you never, ever, ever, ever want to point one of these in your eye or anybody else's eye. But laser itself, we're going to talk a little bit about the word laser. Now, laser is actually an acronym. It means um, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Now you can't find lasers anywhere in nature. They're strictly man-made. And basically what it is, what a laser is, is when the atoms, when the electrons get excited, they can get go from a state of essentially what their ground state energy level is, and then they get excited. And when they get really, really excited, a lot of energy is added to them, they release photons. And these photons that get released when they get concentrated enough, they essentially emit a very concentrated beam of this laser energy. It, they essentially, uh, oh, sorry, I got totally mixed up there, emit this uh, concentrated beam of laser energy. And the cool thing about a laser is that all of the energy in a laser is at the same wavelength. That's why they have specific colors compared to a lot of light, compared to normal light, you're not going to get that, right? It's all going to be that same color. So with this, with a laser, I'm going to go ahead and point it back this way. That's why you see that straight shade of green right there. And that's why lasers can go for such long distances compared to something like a flashlight, right? Flashlight, when I turn this on, it's all spread out. You can kind of see it dissipating all over the place. It's basically diffusing. So the light is spreading all over the place, but those lasers don't do that. They can point for a very long distance. All the energy is at that same wavelength. It is the most parallel form of light. But what's really cool is even though they shoot very, very straight and they can go for a very long distance, they can still get refracted through different things. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera down so you guys can get a little bit of a view of our table here with some of our things. Now this first thing I got is a crystal skull that I have. I love this, but what's cool to watch with this, I'm going to slide some of this to the side here. What's cool to watch with this is when I got the laser on and it's above the skull, you see that it goes straight to my hand, right? That's a straight beam. The second it hits that skull, that skull just brightens up and you'll, you'll notice that there's no clear beam that's getting to my hand. It's basically just making this skull glow. And the reason that's happening is because as this laser is getting into this skull and into this crystal, there's all these different jagged edges and rough spots in there. The laser is bouncing all over the place in there and it's not actually being able to pass through. So some of the light is going through, but it's in all different directions. So it's not in that straight line anymore. So it's basically just bouncing off in all kinds of different directions and going everywhere. And this can be seen in a lot of different things. And this is one of my favorite things to do with laser pointers. It's to kind of test it out and see how they refract through different things. This fluorescent light bulb, right? Same kind of thing. You can point the laser. It's going to go, we'll just point it straight there. Go straight to my arm, straight beam. The second it gets in the light, the light bulb glows. So you can light a light bulb with these laser pointers. And it's really cool because the light gets essentially trapped in there. You're not getting anything coming out to the other side. So if I do it from straight up top, you're not getting any light underneath compared to if I were to do the laser pointer to the side, you're not getting any of that underneath. It's all trapped inside there, bouncing around inside of the actual light bulb. That's just because the surface is rough enough to, um, wow, sorry, I'm like totally struggling with words here. The surface is rough enough to essentially make these lasers kind of bounce around on the inside and stay inside of that light bulb. And another way this can be seen is with, I've got two water bottles here. One of them just has regular water in it. And you'll notice that when I shine the laser through it, some of it gets trapped in there but I can still get a pretty solid beam. Now it's bouncing around a little bit, but I can still get a pretty solid beam to my hand, right? That's because though the water is a little bit rougher and it, well, a lot of light does refract and bounce around inside of actual water, 
it's for the most part still and smooth, so the laser can pass completely through there with a little bit of refraction. But this other light bulb that I, or this other uh, water bottle that I have has a little bit of cornstarch in there. And that cornstarch is gonna add a whole bunch of density to that water and more particles specifically for the lasers to bounce off of. So, start right here, shine straight through. When I get down, you'll notice it glows, it fluoresces. It turns into this bright beam, this bright light bulb basically. And though my hand's glowing a little bit, there's really not a concentrated beam of laser. You can't see the laser passing through because it's bouncing off of so much on the inside of this water bottle. And that's just kind of how lasers and refraction and everything work, right? The more, the rougher things are, the more particles there are, the more these lights are gonna, the more the laser beams are gonna bounce around and not go straight. But without that, the lasers go perfectly straight. They go exactly where you want. They're all parallel. And it's really hard to see the beam. I'll see if I can do it to where you can see the beam a little bit. But if you see the beam, you'll notice that it's flickering a little bit, right? Now, those are basically inconsistencies in the actual wavelength. So they're all parallel, they're all kind of flowing around, but those are just little gaps in the wave specifically. And that's why it gives you that laser flickering effect. That's what that is when you pass it through dust particles and all of that. That's why you can actually see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this light back on just a little bit here. And then we're gonna do a couple more little demos here and I'm gonna angle this camera back up so you can see my lovely face again. How's it going? I know you missed me. Another thing that lasers do that a lot of people uh, have seen before, whether you played laser tag or whatever it is, is refract off of reflectable surfaces and go bounce around, right? So got a little mirror right here. If I wanted to point it towards you, I've got my laser pointer, see, pointing this way. And then I can angle that depending on where I put the mirror, all over the place. So if I was pointing it this way, I've got my laser pointer. You can see it's kind of bouncing off the screen. When I put it on the mirror, I can angle the mirror around and point the laser in different directions even though I'm not moving my actual laser. And that's because, like we were talking about the roughness versus smoothness, the smoothness of this mirror right here allows for that laser beam to just direct di straight back in a specific direction compared to getting refracted all over the place. Because if I did the same thing with a flashlight, I can shine the flashlight on the mirror and you get a little bit of that because it's a little bit focused, but it's gonna diffuse a lot more. And the more focused that beam is, the more, uh, the more like still, the more, uh, what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, the more pure image you're going to see, so you can kind of see that pretty solid light there. The closer I get, the bigger it gets. But with a laser, it's very, very precise. And lasers are very, very high energy, which is why if you get a high enough energy laser, you can actually light things on fire. You can do stuff like that. You can actually light a match on fire with a high enough power laser. But you have to be very, very careful if you're ever using a laser. And that's why you never want to point them at anybody's eye or anything like that. Now, a lot of that is, has to do with reflection and the lasers bouncing off of things, the different demos that we've been talking about so far. A lot of the refraction is really, really cool. If you've ever seen a laser show, right, you get all these different shapes and the lasers look like they're going all over the place, but it's typically a few lasers that are being refracted through things and then adding different elements like motion or sound that are impacting the shapes that you're seeing. So I've got this little case here. It's like an old Altoids case, basically, but it's made out of this tin and the top has a little bit of like a, a kind of a plexiglass pla clear plastic film and the rest of it is just tin, right? So we're gonna see what happens when we reflect this. I'm gonna slide this this way. We're gonna see what happens when we reflect our laser with the top on off of, that's a flashlight, that's not a laser at all, don't mind me, off of this and we're gonna see what shapes and what it looks like. So, as we have the top on, you'll see that the laser is, you know, it's, you can see that little bit of a fine point right there. You can still see a little bit of that fine laser point, but it's very kind of spread out. You can see the shapes are shifting around a little bit 
without much movement, and that's because of that rougher surface that it's refracting through. Um, but it's also allowing it to focus a little bit as it bounces off with the top on, which is why you still see a little bit of that clear point. But the further away I get from the center point, the more kind of crazy it goes. But if I take the top off and just use the tin and it's not refracting through that film at the top, you get a much more just fuzzy overall look. It's got a very central point but you don't have that separation of the point and kind of the fuzziness of it. You just get that non-clear picture. And if there was right, like loud noises or different things that would, that would kind of shake this a bit, it's hard for me to do that with my hand right now, it would create some different shapes. And that's how laser shows work. They essentially will have a piece of like mosaic glass, which is gonna lead me into my next demo, um, a piece of mosaic glass or something like that that the laser is gonna be pointing through, and then loud noises and the different motions and everything actually impact those vibrations of the lasers and make it turn into all kinds of crazy shapes and you can kind of control it once you get gotten used to it a little bit but this next one this is one of my favorite things this is my grandma's old kaleidoscope which i don't know how many people know what a kaleidoscope is anymore but it's basically um this piece of it's you look through one end and spin it and it's got mosaic glass on the end and it makes all these different shapes i'm gonna cut the light on again real quick maybe there we go. And we're going to see what happens when we pass our laser light through the kaleidoscope, both sitting still and while it's in motion. So while it's sitting still, let's see what shapes we make. So you'll notice that when I get it into those right spots there, you get some normal shapes a little bit, but they're a little kind of crazy. And I start passing it around the other side and you get lots of different shapes. So once I start spinning it and pass it through while it's in motion, the lasers start going kind of crazy, right? Because it's hitting all these different pieces of mosaic glass. It's bouncing off of them. It's passing through them, all kinds of different stuff. And you're getting a lot of these shapes. So you can see on a very large scale, if we had a bunch of these, you could have a pretty cool laser show. And once you start getting the right noises in place, you can actually control those lasers. Now, my last demo here is one of my personal favorites, and it's basically the ability to bend lasers. And it's through a process called total internal reflection, which I'll get into a, bit, a little bit more in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this this way. And this is an experiment you can do right at home if you have a laser pointer. My laser pointer is pretty powerful. You don't necessarily need a laser pointer as powerful as this, but this is a really, really cool little demo here. And basically what we're using, you need a bowl. So I like to use like a, you know, a glass bowl because you can see all of the light and everything through it. So you need a glass bowl. You need a water bottle. But the key to this water bottle is it's got a little, little pinhole right here that I pushed through with like a tiny screwdriver. And you need that about halfway to just below halfway down your water bottle. And you don't need too much other stuff, but because my bowl is so tall, I basically got this little thing here for the water bottle to stand on just so it pours right into the top. And then if we have a water bottle, we're going to need water. So I've got this picture of water. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill our water bottle up. Now, what you're going to see is through our little pinhole, the water is going to start pouring out. Now, as it's doing that, we're going to take our laser and we're going to pass it through and we're going to try to get it perfectly horizontal to our pinhole and pass it straight through our pinhole. Because when we do that, what you'll notice is the stream of the water is actually going to start glowing. That light is going to pass right through that pinhole. Try to get it to the perfect spot. This is like the hardest part. If you take some time and like set up some rig to make it perfectly horizontal, it's perfect, but this is the most hard part. But right there you can see that the actual stream is glowing and the laser is bending straight down into the water. There you go. Got to get into that perfect spot. And basically what happens is that's a, a process called total internal reflection. Now what's happening is water is equally as reflective on the inside of it, like so below the surface and above the surface. So when the laser light gets caught inside of that stream, 
all of the light in that laser or all of the light is basically getting trapped in that stream and bouncing around the inside of it. So instead of going all the way straight through the water bottle, the lasers get trapped in there and they follow that stream down and it basically bends the light. It's not actually bending it. It's just making the light bounce to a different direction and it's keeping it from going in that straight line that a laser would normally go in because those lasers, like we said, go in a straight line. Now, that was just a little bit about lasers today. I hope you had a lot of fun. We've got all kinds of awesome content here for you every day here with Arizona Science Center. So if you want to find out more, go ahead and follow us on Facebook and Instagram or go to azscience.org to see all kinds of cool stuff that we offer. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day, weekend, everything, and see you next time.